His Holiness Pope Peter II lies on his deathbed, and you and other trusted cardinals are at his side to determine who the new pope will be. And of course, the only way to determine who the new pope will be in the game Pope or Nope is to do good deeds. And sabotage other people's good deeds so that you look like you've done more good deeds because do evil that good may come at least that's what the slogan of the game says regardless though this is the game pope or nope and it plays from two to i believe four other players or six other players two to six players it takes about a half an hour to play and is for ages 11 and up and as you play the game you're going to be getting a hand of cards these cards you'll be playing down one at a time on your turn and you'll start with a good deed to begin the game or at least hopefully you will and players are going to try and sabotage your good deeds and you're going to try and sabotage theirs while you're also going to try and upgrade your deeds to make them better and play additional ones to score you these points if you can get five of these points which you'll score from round to round you'll win the game of pope or nope a challenging game that involves a lot of conniving and backstabbing while also doing the most heavenly and proper things you possibly can are you ready to sabotage the other cardinals while doing good deeds and stopping them from doing good deeds which is definitely not a bad deed because you're trying to do good deeds in this game well, prepare for me to explain what you get in the game and how to play. Now, of course, you're going to get this rule book, which explains uh, how to play. Show it right here. That's how you play. And then you're also going to get a deck of cards. And these cards are already obviously already dealt out for three players. All the cards that are in the deck are shown there. This is a first player marker. These are your good deed tokens to be getting if you successfully have good deeds left at the end of a round. And then, of course, the rest of the playing cards. These are the hands you'll start with in a three or more player game. So in general, when you're playing two players, you're going to be getting seven cards and you're going to choose two good deeds and place them in front of you. But when you're playing with any more like three or more, you're going to be getting five cards and then you're going to choose one good deed like these ones here, place it in front of you and the rest will be in your hands. So you should have four cards. Choose the player who is the holiest or maybe just the least sinful player, which is much more likely, and place that next to them. They'll be the starting player, and then you can begin the game. There are different cards in the game. Now, first of all, as you can see, there's the deed cards. You have the deeds of one, two, three, and four value. Obviously, four is better than one. And then you're also going to have the cancel deeds cards, which is also one through four. The cancels will have these little X's on them, and they can be placed on deeds to prevent them from being useful at the end of a round. You've got the Pope card. And you've also got the nope card. Popes are basically a bonus to whatever deed lies on the field. You would place it on a deed such as this one here. It would go to a two and then it could be canceled by another card like one of these guys here. However, if you play a Pope on a four, that makes it a very powerful five, which can only be canceled by this card here, a nope. Nopes can cancel cards as well as canceling Pope cards. You always want to play the Pope if you can and nope on the Pope if you can as well kind of makes sense based on the game's name, but these are the action cards. Draw two. When you play this card, you'll simply draw two cards. The reduce so is going to reduce a number by one. And yes, one can go to zero, two goes to one, three goes to two, and four goes to three, but you cannot reduce a Pope from uh, a four to a five. Also, you got this cancel card. Now cancel cards can cancel any cards played as long as they have a symbol on them with the cancel symbol. And in this case, if I had this one here, somebody played this on me, which cancels my one, I could play cancel on the cancel card and thusly remove it, keeping my one in play. And then finally, opportunity or opportunus, if you want to say it in Latin, very butchered like, then you could actually play this, which will give you an extra slot to play more deeds. In general, players are only going to get one slot to play deeds in a three or more player game. But when you play a card like this in front of you, it gives you an extra slot so that you can play an additional deed in front of you, which will give you more points at the end of the round. When everybody has chosen to pass, the round will end and whoever has deeds left in front of them will score a point. If you get one deed, you get one point. If you have two, you get two points. And then finally three, if you're playing the two-player game or happen to get a lot of these opportunity cards, you can get to three points. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You'll be playing in multiple rounds, attempting to complete at least five good deeds before anybody else. And if you get five of these tokens, you win the game. Let's go ahead and just show you one round. I'm going to hide these cards and pretend like they were... Well, actually, we'll just go ahead and shuffle it really quick into the deck. Just like that. There we go. 
And luckily, we've already got a round dealt out to us. So I'll move these cards down a little bit. To begin the game, everybody was dealt five cards, and then everybody chose a deed from their hand, from one to four, to place down onto the field. From there, the player with this little symbol here is going to go first, and they can play any card in their hand that they want. He's going to draw two, he's got an opportunity card, he's got a three, and he's got to cancel two. Well, cancel two is useful, so he can choose to go ahead and cancel that player's two, which now means he's got no good deeds in front of him. The next player is going to get a chance to go. He's got a cancel card. He's got a reduce -o. He's got a pope, which is amazing, and he's got a three. And he has a couple options here. He can choose to A, cancel this card here and leave a two there, or he could choose to um, play a three. He could play a three over this, ignoring this card and moving his deed from a two to a three. He could choose to uh, play a Reduso on a player's card. And I think what he wants to do is I think he's going to actually just go ahead and play this three, blocking that two. Thusly, now he's upgraded and he still has that deed in play. The next player, he's got a minus one, two minus ones, a draw two, and a minus two. Eh, I'll go ahead and place that on there. Sad days for this guy here. Now it's this guy's turn here. He's going to go ahead. He, he does have a minus three. He can play that on here. Opportunity. And then he's got to draw two. He's going to draw two because he wants to see what his hand is going to be like before he wants to play anything else. Okay, not so bad. This player over here, once again, is going to go for for broke. And he's going to... Hmm, let's go ahead and reduce all that. Now that makes that two go to a one. This player's turn here. He doesn't have a way to bring that one back, and he can't get rid of the Reduso, so he'll actually draw two cards from the deck. He's got that Nope card, he's got that Nope, and he drew another draw two. All right, nice. Back to this player's turn here. He'll go ahead and play an Opportunity card, placing that in front of him, so now he's got two slots. This one's still there, even though it's canceled, so now he can play a new deed if he wants on his next turn. All right, got a cancel card here, which doesn't really help him currently, and he's got a Pope card, so he can choose to pass. Now, when you pass, you can still come back to your turn, provided everybody doesn't pass in succession. So he's going to choose to pass right now and be done with his turn. The next player is going to get a chance to go, and he is going to draw two more cards. He's got a lot of good stuff here. He's got that opportunity card. Nice. This player over here has got his one... He's got a minus one. He'll place this one deed on top of the opportunity. So now he's got one good deed in play. This guy here, he's still got a cancel card. Still got the Pope, which he doesn't need. So he's going to he's gonna pass. This guy's turn over here. Hmm. A new, let's see, what does he want to do? He'll play that opportunity card, I think. And back to this guy's turn over here. He'll cancel that three out. Now this guy's up. And this guy, I think he can play this Pope card right on here which I think is going to bump it up to four. So it ignores that. So this is basically a plus one, right? Which is nice. So he could have had nothing, but now he's got that bonus. All right. So now this guy over here is up. Hmm. Can't reduce. So it won't help. Minus two, minus one. He can play that minus one there. Now he's lost both of his points. Poor guy. This guy's got a minus one left. So he's going to have to pass. He's got nothing else he can do. I, oh, actually he does. He can, he can minus one that. He will. He'll minus one that. All right, cancel card. This guy doesn't want to cancel any of these three cards, so he's going to be done. This guy's up again now. Noping on the Pope. So, because he noped the Pope, Pope's going to go away. And he's left with a minus three. It's his turn once again. He will cancel. Wow, he canceled the minus three there. It's a nice play right there. Now it's this guy's turn here. He will reduce all this, putting it to two. This guy chooses to pass, or both of them choose to pass, and then minus two on the two. Nice. And that will end the round, because nobody else can play anything and everybody's chosen to pass. And each player will look in front of them and see what they have. This player over here has got two X's, which are basically nothing, so no good deeds for this poor, uh, this poor want-to-be Pope. He's got a minus two as well, even though he had the Pope card, so he's out as well. And this guy here, also out. Nothing on the opportunity card, a minus one on his one, so nobody scores points this round. As you can see, the game can score fairly high or fairly low, depending on how people play their cards and how aggressive they want to be, but that's the basic idea of one round of the game. You then shuffle these cards back up, deal five cards out to each player, choose one deed for each player, and begin a game with Pope or Nope. That's how you play. Let's talk about whether or not you want to become the Pope or, or, or Nope. I didn't choose the Pope life. The Pope life chose me. And no one ever said Popin was easy. And in the game Pope or Nope, 
God, those are terrible. <laughs> in the game Poper, nope. You're basically trying to score those good deeds and sabotage your other friends. You saw how it was played. It's pretty straightforward. It has the feel of like a small tableau management card take that style game we play this live on stream so if you want to check out that you can on our facebook page unfiltered gamer facebook page you can watch us play this live and see if it's right for you it's got a lot of fun it's got a lot of antics the scoring is crazy you could score nothing you could score a bunch of points and nobody else could score anything or everybody could score one point Obviously, how you play matters, and when you play. And as you saw, that actual playthrough I just did right there was a beautiful run run through. So like shockingly for me, because I played everything kind of like accurately to how the best choices might have been. Because sometimes you can play that Pope, right? Instead of waiting at the end there or saving that cancel for a chance to reduce. And everything just kind of fell in line. And sometimes that happens in this game. Now, is it a bit random? Yes. Are there certain times where you're not going to get the cards you want in your hand? Or even deeds in your hand to begin the game? Yes, that can happen. But because the game plays over a multitude of rounds, it's very likely that you're going to be getting better hands in some and not so good hands in another. If this game was just simply one round, it's probably not going to be my cup of tea. But because it plays multiple rounds and it changes round by round on how you want to play I dropped a card and how you want to play and how you want to place certain cards down that makes a big difference to me how the gameplay works I actually really really enjoyed this game it was a lot of fun especially playing with multiple people and the more players the more fun I had but playing that one-on-one -on -one felt like a straight cutthroat take that kind of moving back and forth style game where you got the players attempting to place as many deeds as possible and you're attempting to sabotage them as much as possible the games are the game the cards in the game are very simple to understand there's only four main actions in the game the cancel the opportunity the draw two and then the reduce and then the deeds the deeds go from one to four but can go to zero or five if you have a pope or if you have a reduce out Reduce being this one here. The draw two is obviously one of the best cards in the game because it lets you draw additionally two cards. And if you draw of draw two inside of a draw two, you can get up to three cards additionally from your hand, which is pretty nice, or two cards technically. Cancel. Cancel's great. It's a card that people aren't going to always expect. And how you choose to save your cards in play makes a big difference. I wasn't sure how many different strategies there were to this game, but there's actually quite a few as to how you want to play. In fact, we learned when as we were playing with somebody new on the stream, where they were saving their cards and deciding when you want to pass. And if you want to actually pass and pretend like you have nothing to play in your hand, and then all of a sudden start dropping a bomb down because everybody else has chosen to pass as well. However, if you pass and everyone else does and you have nothing in front of you, it was a terrible, terrible decision because you're going to score no points. So you have to be careful. It's kind of like a living on the edge, push your luck style feel to the game. Whereas on the other aspect of the game, you can just simply play at least one card every turn, thusly keeping the game moving and keeping yourself hopefully in it up until the point where somebody maybe can screw you over. The Pope card card is extremely powerful but the nope card is the exact counter that to that card which is kind of a unique twist sometimes i'll be like oh wow that card's op the pope card and then somebody else goes nope and then it's gone and both cards were used up and i'm like oh i mean i mean that makes sense and then sometimes you get lucky you just get that one point because that pope's able to save you just in the nick of time overall this game's a lot of fun it's gonna hit a specific type of audience i think you're gonna know if you like this game straight up based on how it is played it has a style of uno attached to it so i'll take that style card game and then a slight management i don't want to say tableau management but i will say there's a management that takes place in front of you and in front of other players it plays quick it's got a gateway style game and it's not too aggressive and mean to where certain players will get angry at each other necessarily it can happen but not so much because this is a game about popes and being i don't know holy and, and good to each other except for just this specific moment in time so maybe i suggest complimenting each other as you destroy their deeds in some way i was gonna think of an analogy as to what some maybe like some pope is feeding orphans and you just drop a banana peel and make them trip and then you walk over and start feeding the orphans instead it's kind of what this feels like as far as the niceness involved in the game i mean you're still being nice because you want to do good things but you're also not wanting people to do good things. I'm, I'm pretty sure Jesus would not appreciate this, this, these popes doing this thing. But on the other hand, I think Game of Thrones and, and games related to kings dying and new people becoming in power would uh, agree and say it's the right thing to do. I don't know. What do you think? Overall, solid little game. Check it out. Pope or nope? Down below.